40 deer had to be killed. But as Carol Evans' John Stone reports, that decision is now pitting neighbor against neighbor. They're among nature's mildest. It's the folks around these white-tailed deer who are fighting mad. We bought the home because of the deer. Their daily trek begins in the backyard of Jean Hoffman's St. Louis Park home. She feeds them. If they'd stay here, this would never be an issue. I actually was hoping that I could sort of corral them here so they wouldn't bother the neighbors who don't like them, but apparently that hasn't happened. Cause Instead, the deer cross the street and congregate in Glenn Roberts' backyard. They'll come over here and totally eat our bushes, as you can see, right down to the nubs. They trample his land, they eat his plants, and they leave in return piles of droppings. It's not really an issue of, of, of not liking the deer. We do, but I mean, this is totally, totally gotten out of hand. It's when the deer started to damage St. Louis Park's nearby Westwood Nature Center that the city council chose to act. They said the best answer is to lure the deer to a clearing with corn and shoot them. No one disputes that St. Louis Park's habitable land is too small for the deer population. Aerial surveys show 51 deer lived in the nature center. The city and state say there's room there for 10. Since Monday, police sharpshooters have killed 18. I think it'll be 100 years before people realize how ridiculous what we're doing right now is. For us, it, it certainly was effective. Um, the cost per deer was, was fairly low. Um, there, were, there was almost no, no danger of any accidents um, and it, it was it's a very humane way to do it the deer population in bloomington had been worse until sharpshooters there killed 950 deer over three years their program just ended they call it a success but some in st louis park feel so strongly against shooting deer they've started an ad campaign these kids know little about the controversy around them their sights set on seeing a deer all they know is that's tough to do these days. John Stone, Carol Evan News, St. Louis Park. And after reducing the deer population this way, the city council will try a sterilization plan to keep the deer from mating. The snow may have melted here in the Twin Cities, but in some areas of the country, winter just won't quit. Several inches of snow blanketed Pittsburgh and other parts of Pennsylvania. The same storm also dropped a few inches of snow in New York City. Paul Douglas, that's one more reason to be grateful for uh, this weather today, I suppose, huh? Absolutely. We've mm -hmm. been let off easier for the past few weeks, no doubt about that. We had a dusting today, though. Yeah, a tenth of an inch. Just a light coating, just enough to make things a little more interesting for rush hour this morning. But uh, tomorrow's going to feel nice. If you're out and about and you feel a little queasy, a little dazed, don't panic. It's just spring fever. Low 50s possible tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow, the day to get out and do some backyard tinkering and puttering. Let's check the almanac if we can. The high, actually the normal now is 38. We're doing very well. 44, the high today, 29 the low. 207 inch of precip and uh, a tenth of an inch of that was snow. The sunrise and sunset times just about identical now. Well, 12 hours apart. I think it's 623 and 621 as we approach the equinox. 40 now, partly cloudy, a north breeze at 7. The dew point, 28 degrees humidity. Pretty low, 62% the barometer now on the rise. All right, let's check a few maps, and you can see skies clearing out. Still a few patchy clouds overhead, but the stage is set for a nice day tomorrow as high pressure exerts its influence, the air sinking and drying out and warming up. Temperatures mostly upper 30s and low 40s, but already close to 50 out in the southwestern corner of the state. It was another balmy day. I mean, forget March and forget April. It felt more like May today over the central and southern plains. Highs way up into the 70s even some 80s. 83 in Dallas last hour, 75 Phoenix, 45 in Seattle, and 54 just to the west in Bismarck. Quite a bit of mild Pacific warmed air, and that's going to come in tomorrow. Now that we've lost most of the snow cover over the southern half of Minnesota, temperatures can really shoot up. The sun's energy going into heating up the air instead of melting snow. Eventually, an eastbound Pacific cool front, the same one that's producing snow by the foot in the Cascades of Washington. <laughs> Ran out of breath there. Got to start exercising more. Anyway, it's going to arrive with a few rain showers here Sunday. <laughs> and then a bit of a cool down by early next week. I am sorry about that. Here's our forecast tonight. It calls for a nice evening. Then partly cloudy overnight. A low of 28 to 33. Dim sun tomorrow. I'm hungry. Dim sun, increasing high clouds. Milder with a high in the low 50s. 
Sunday, not as nice, mostly cloudy, a few light rain showers, 54, and then cooling down, but still well above normal as far ahead as we can see. It still looks a little more interesting next week. Maybe by the end of next week, I'll have something to point to on my maps. I was going to say, still two weeks left in March. Yeah, anything can happen, Joan, mm -hmm. and probably will. Yep. Thank you very much. See ya. The Gophers face their first tournament test tonight in Sacramento. Russell Shimoka has a live report next to sports. Plus, North Carolina begins its defense as college hoops reigning national champs. I can't drive this, which is why I don't drive most minivans. Except for one, Mercury Villager. It's different. It drives just like a car. Villager offers versatile seven-passenger seating, front-wheel drive, standard driver's side airbag, ABS brakes, and meets all government safety standards for passenger cars. Maybe that's why it's outselling every import competitor. Mercury Villager. Now you don't have to drive a truck to drive a minivan. At your Lincoln Mercury dealer now. She said she liked things relaxed, eclectic, definitely unmatched. She said she liked things casual and feet up comfortable. She said she likes interesting little corners and a sunny spot to bask in. That's Gabbard's too, and it's a new way to do a room. Now open downstairs at Gabbard's in the Galleria. Every Neon comes with an advanced single overhead cam 16 valve engine and its 132 high-tech horses should come in mighty handy when you're trying to coax your car onto a freeway. $89.75 for starters, $12.5 nicely loaded. Say hello to Neon. Plymouth Neon. Automobile Magazine's Automobile of the Year. Now at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. CARE 11 TV, along with KTCZ, the city's 97, and Subway present a woman of distinction. Ann Barkaloo is vice president of corporate public relations for the Dayton Hudson Corporation, a catalyst behind the United Way Success by Six program and a mentor for other businesswomen. We have an obligation to keep those same doors of opportunity open for, for young women today. Look for Women of Distinction nomination forms in this month's Minneapolis St. Paul magazine, Twin Cities Business Monthly, or at any Subway sandwich and salad shop. Don't miss this one. The March Mega Sale at Coon Rapids Chrysler Plymouth. Just $49 down delivers a brand new 94 Voyager with air conditioning for $13,990 or $223 a month. $49 down delivers a new 94 Plymouth Sundance for $77.90 or $139 a month. We even have 30 used V6 Voyagers to choose from starting at $39.90. Hurry to the March Mega Sale where $49 down delivers, but only at Coon Rapids Chrysler Plymouth. Way too many sports to cover today. Randy Shaver's out at the U of M, bouncing between the Sports Pavilion and Williams Arena, trying to cover yeah, it all. There's a lot of stuff going on. We're over the Pavilion here tonight, the 4AA Section Boys final game. We played here at 6.30. There's girls basketball across the hallway in Williams Arena. There are sports happening all over the place. We'll talk basketball and hockey in a minute. First, the Vikings. They traded for a starting tight end today. At least they hope eventually will be a starting tight end. His name is Adrian Cooper. He came in here during a free agent parade a while back with uh, Mitchell and Hitton, but today he shows up as part of a trade that the Vikings made. We're going to show you a Cooper at Winter Park this afternoon. There he is holding up his jersey. The Vikings gave up a third round and sixth round selection for Adrian Cooper to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, this is what Cooper had to say about playing with the Vikings. I've always wanted to be a starter, and uh, I wanted to create a name for myself. I just didn't want to be one of those players that just stood in the... Uh, the background all his career, and I think this was a great opportunity for me to step to the forefront. Vikings traded for Adrian Cooper after he had signed a contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Vikings also signed safety Betsy Glenn to a new contract today. NCAA tournament, the Reverend Jerry Falwell bringing Liberty to the tournament against North Carolina. Jody Chapman hits a three for Liberty. They led by one with 10 minutes left. But back comes North Carolina. 16-0 run, Rashid Wallace the slam and they go on to win by 20. 71-51 was the final. At the Thunderdome today, it's Pitino Kentucky and Rick Pitino and his team taking on Tennessee State. Tony Delk for three. The Wildcats go on a run early. They hold on. Travis Ford, the steal and the lay-in. 83-70 was the final. Kentucky advances. So does Marquette in the Southeast region. In the Midwest, it's in all Oklahoma. 
Oklahoma State and Tulsa with the upset of UCLA in the East Region, North Carolina, and Boston College both win today. And it's Virginia and Arizona cruising in that West Region. Speaking of which, the Gophers will play the late game out West in Sacramento tonight against Southern Illinois. It'll start about 10 o'clock our time. A lot of Gopher fans have made the trip out West, but one fan was already in Sacramento to start with. And Russell Shimoka has that story live from Sacramento. Russell? How are you doing, Randy? Yes, uh, Gopher fans are right now at a pep rally in downtown Sacramento. They're waiting for the doors right now to open for the second session of the afternoon. That'll be uh, the Louisville-Boise State game, followed by the Gophers and uh, Southern Illinois. As uh, Randy said, uh, we found one Gopher fan living here in the Golden State. In attendance at the Minnesota shoot-around last night was Sacramento's biggest Gopher fan. Hello, this is Dr. Paul Johnson. Dr. Johnson is an orthopedic surgeon who grew up in St. Louis Park. After graduating medical school at the U, he moved to Sacramento for his residency. Tickets for tonight's game? Hard to come by. But Dr. Johnson got his through a lottery drawing before knowing the Gophers were headed west. Last year when I heard the NCAA was coming here, I decided I'd send away for tickets. And a lot of disappointed people when they sent them out, but they sent them out, I think it was last fall, and I was glad to get mine. Johnson played basketball on the St. Louis Park varsity that made three trips to the state tournament. His teammate, former Gopher and NBAer Jim Peterson. Actually, he played for the Kings for a brief stint when I first moved to Sacramento, and then he got traded uh, to the Warriors for Ralph Sampson. That may end up being his greatest claim to fame. And How big of a so, treat will it be tonight? Um, I've been a Gopher fan for a long time. When I went to medical school, I had season tickets. My father-in-law has been a season ticket holder for over 20 years, I think. And as a matter of fact, uh, when we move back next year, we already have season tickets reserved. All right. All right. Uh, Paul Johnson will be coming back to the Twin Cities. That is a good part of the story. And also, when I asked some of the players and the, co and the coaches, uh, what's the one thing they would bring back from Williams Arena? It is the fans there in Minnesota. Hope the fans here make a lot of noise tonight. Back to you, Randy, in the All Twin right. Cities. All right, thanks very much, Russell. Again, that game starts at 10 o'clock our time tonight here in the Twin Cities. Gopher hockey team getting ready for the hottest goalie in the country right now, Michigan Tech's Jamie Ram. It's the WCHA semifinals in Milwaukee, and here's Coach Doug Wu. You know, obviously Jamie Ram is the, the key to their success. They don't give up any goals, and, you know, we've just got to get in there and, and battle and, and hope we can get a few by uh, Jamie Ram and, and hold our own for it. Great news for St. Cloud State today. They beat Wisconsin in overtime in the first semi of the day. Dave Holm got the game-winning goal. 3-2 to two was the final. The Huskies are in the WCHA championship game tomorrow night. And everybody's hoping it'll be against the Gophers. Blake and New London Spicer won Class A girls semifinal action today. We'll have it all covered on the Prep Sports Extra tonight at 10. Joan, back okay. to you. Thanks a lot, Rand. All right. Still ahead, a check on the day's top stories and just home headlines. Plus, a school principal goes to the dogs on a bet with his students. <laughs> Tonight's Care 11 weather has been brought to you in part by your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Now, a coast-to-coast -coast savings event that only comes once a year. Announcing the national Jeep sale at your Jeep and Eagle dealer, where you can buy or lease Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo at special savings. Get $300 cash back when you buy or lease Jeep Wrangler. Or get special savings when you buy or lease Cherokee Sport with no charge air. So hurry in today, because while our vehicles know no limits, our sales do. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer for the best in automotive sales, service, and value. What's it like to co-star with an animal? Entertainment Tonight joins Mimi Rogers and the animal actors of Hollywood to see why her new film, Monkey Trouble, took her for a walk on the wild side. And nobody does the spring break thing like MTV and Entertainment Tonight. So grab your sunscreen and party duds and join us for the wildest week in the West, only on the next Entertainment Tonight. Friday at 6.30 on CARE 11. They already have. Impressive. Very. I think she likes me. At 82, Val Cornwell is our oldest living transplant patient, and the kidney she received 18 years ago seems to have resuscitated a few hearts as well. You never get any place with her. Taking care of Minnesota, the University of Minnesota Health System. And today we'll have clear skies, no precipitation, so it's going to be a beautiful day. You won't care.
if you have the only pickup in its class with four-wheel drive and four-wheel ABS. The GMC Sonoma, it's weather resistant. Go to your GMC truck dealer instead. Because right now, they have a special allocation of all new GMC Sonomas at an incredible lease rate. So see your dealer today. Can Carla conquer her fear of flying? Can the right teacher help her earn her wings? <laughs> Next time on Cheers. Friday at 1035 on CARE 11. If you're just getting home, here's a quick look at what's making news. Bosnian Muslims and Croats sign a federation treaty at the White House today. President Clinton hails the move as a clear sign that warring factions want peace in Bosnia. The treaty is aimed at pressuring Serbs to end ethnic fighting. Figure skater Tanya Harding has a new look. She spent an hour and a half at the Portland Justice Center today. Authorities took a mugshot and fingerprinted the skater. These were formalities after Harding pleaded guilty this week to hindering the investigation in the attack on Nancy Kerrigan. Here at home, authorities are looking for an arsonist responsible for a half dozen fires in an Augsburg College dormitory. So far, the fires have caused only minor damage, but officials are worried what might follow. Augsburg College is offering a reward for information on those fires. And finally, an Anoka school principal learns it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. <laughs> ah, Principal Harlan Danner made good today on a promise to his students. The children at Lincoln Elementary have been collecting canned goods for food share and surpassed their goal. Let's see that again. So, <laughs> as part of a bet, Danner vowed to kiss some bulldogs, and today he paid up, placing a few wet ones on the pooches. The children seem delighted, but we can't say the same for the bulldogs. I'd like to see the bulldog's face after that little interaction there, wouldn't you? Mm, they'll do anything. Who got the better end of that deal? What a good sport, yeah. though, huh? Yeah, really. Yeah. All right, the forecast worth pondering one more time. It looks really nice for tomorrow. Plenty of dim sunshine and a high of about 52, maybe 53, 54. Tomorrow, the brighter, nicer, kinder, gentler day of the weekend, Joan. Mm, and aren't you lucky it falls on a weekend? Yeah, what yeah. a coincidence. And that'll do it for us. Thank you very much for joining us. See you back here at 10. Closed captioning for Carol Evan News is brought to you in part by Best Buy. If Skippy bathing suits are...